I'm 25 minutes after seven. You're watching the AM show. We did promise a conversation on the balloting, but even before that, we know that there are some additions uh, to the presidential candidates. And our colleague Joseph Akable has been following this all through. He's in court. He's at the Electoral Commission. He's like everywhere, really. Uh, he's joining us. And I thought he was with Nanado as well. <laughs> with the president. No, runner. with the president. Yeah, but you left the president here. You're following election matters. The president is far away, <laughs> beyond reach, so I the correspondent. And you were rather with the yeah. president. Yes. Good morning. It's always good to see you and to have you, really. Mm. So yesterday you spent the greater part of your day. It was actually two of. days. The first day was when uh, they were receiving uh, the forms in terms of allowing the candidates to make their amendments mm. and then present it back to the commission. And yesterday was uh, the day that they did the announcement as well as undertake the balloting exercise as well. Okay. So... What was the mood there at the Electoral Commission yesterday? I, I heard uh, the chairperson say that the media misreported a lot of things. It was actually like friendly atmosphere. People went in and out during the correction processes. But that was not the picture the media painted. Mm -hmm. Well, I think... You, the, went, you came to paint a wrong picture. Uh, not at all. I mean, <laughs> I, I disagree with her. Uh, in a sense that what it appears uh, she had a problem with is the fact that uh, there were some reports that they had identified additional errors mm -hmm. on the forms of the various uh, candidates. And in the long run, uh, it appears the media was rather vindicated because some of them still had their forms rejected. So if uh, it wasn't accurate reportage, then uh, why did Hassan Ayaga, for instance, have his form rejected by the commission? But at the commission's uh, headquarters, it was along with uh, one of anxiety, and not just on the part of uh, the party, but in terms of even the media personnel who were guarded over there. Mm. More often than not, you have the Electoral Commission announce that maybe there is a press conference before you have press men uh, gathering at the Commission's office. But this time around, there was no such announcement. The press were just there, even on a day when they were receiving a nomination form, we were all gathered there. We kept asking them whether the announcement would be today. They told us, oh, maybe it will be on that day. We're waiting. We waited in the evening. We are still asking. The commissioners themselves were not sure because they had so much work to do. Then eventually we had to leave. The next day, we didn't receive any call of any press conference. The media guys Which were was yesterday. There. Yesterday. Nobody called you guys. We just, just there. went there. And from <laughs> right from morning, waiting, you ask the commission, they are telling you when they are ready, they will announce. They are not but telling you what is supposed to call today. you. It's not. I say you're by force. No, but the, but, but the <laughs> but people are the, interested. You, you recall when uh, they announced the rejection of the forms? I mean, with that one, uh, it was a, a press conference invitation. So you are aware there was something going to take place. But this time around, no one knew, even officials, when you ask the PR at that point whether the press conference will be today, he tells you you should be a bit patient. They are still not sure. They are working on the form. So once they are ready, they'll let you know. Mm. And finally, there was that announcement. What were you guys expecting? Uh, first and foremost, we were just expecting it to be an announcement of uh, those who will be, whose forms have been accepted by the commission. But some few minutes to when we got confirmation that it would take place at around 4.30 p.m., then we just saw the political parties, the officials, some of them just walk into the IPAC conference room. So at that point, we became a bit confused and started wondering whether there was something else that was going to take place. <laughs> so we just started inquiring from uh, the party official what they had come there for, and they let us in the know that, in fact, they, were, they had been informed to come and undertake the balloting exercise. Uh, so that was quite interesting. And uh, a very, another interesting bit of, about that is the fact that all of them came in. So not just those who were already on the ballot, all those who had presented their forms again, they were also expecting that their names would be mentioned and given a clearance to contest their post. Mm. They were also present. Then after the first announcement, as you may assume, they had to exit and allow the others who have been given a clearance to undertake the ballot <coughs> exercise. For those who had their forms rejected, um, were the reasons for which the Electoral Commission rejected the forms beyond those that, uh, for which uh, they had gone to court? Uh, for this time around, the reasons were not stated. Uh, you recall earlier when that announcement came, there were specifics. They mentioned one candidate after the other. They mentioned even in, in cases of double subscription, they even mentioned the name of uh, the voter in question who was undertaking that act. This time around, it was just a blanket statement to the effect that the following people have failed uh, to meet CI 94, that's Regulation 92, uh, that talks about or gives the outline of what you are supposed to meet in terms of the requirements. So this time around, the commissioner didn't tell us exactly what their problem was in terms of their nomination form. It was just an announcement that their form has been rejected by the commissioner. And you didn't follow up with those who had their forms rejected to find out the reasons for which they had their forms rejected? Uh, I tried interacting with uh, Mr. John Ameka. He is the running mate to Dr. Henry Lati of the GCPP. And even before, in fact, he was there long before 
uh, the press conference started for the very first announcement and he was telling me that as far as they are aware the mistakes that were pointed out to them they are satisfied with those mistakes and they were had successfully presented it so they expected the commission to accept the form uh, then again when it ended and their form was rejected i asked him again what he thinks was the actual mistake he tells me he wasn't even sure himself mm. in terms of their next line of action to he says uh, they need to hold on a bit and i uh, try and get a communication from the electoral commission as to the specific issues and they'll decide what they'll be doing next was it Kiyadon Kobe? She came in to present her form. In fact, on the day when they were allowed to uh, pick their form, she was the first to arrive. She picked their form and left and brought it back in the company of her running mate and presented her form back to the commission. Uh, but when the announcement was being made, she was, wasn't at the IPA conference room. But unfortunately for her, her form was rejected once again. Okay. How about, about Hassan Ayaga? Sorry, Roland. Um, a representative of the party was present. Uh, that is even in terms of picking a form and going to make the corrections and bringing it back all through the process. He wasn't uh, present. Even when they were asked to bring uh, their officials for balloting, he was still not present. An official from the party, uh, Kim Razak Poku, uh, the general secretary, was present and he received the news. And shortly afterwards, he left the conference room. And I know you keep saying IPAC conference room. It's the Electoral Commission's conference room. <laughs> because they have a lot of the IPAC, IPAC meetings. meetings. Well, that's actually the name of the conference room. Okay. Uh, that is the name of the conference it's, room. It's been written there. Uh, that is how the commissioner refers to the conference room as okay. the IPAC conference but, room but, in terms of invitations to programs. And but critically, for those parties, we know now seven, uh, including an individual who is going to run as an independent candidate, um, for those that had now come to join, the PPP, we have the NDP as well as um, uh, the last PNC. Uh, PNC. Um, did the commissioner say or those very individuals or the officials say that they had satisfied so and so or even the additional ones as a result of which they were approved? Uh, it was a similar uh, um, uh, announcement, just like, those, just like the, those who were rejected. So they just made a point that these are the ones who have been able to make the necessary amendments to comply with the law as directed by the Supreme Court. Uh, so in effect, their form has been accepted by the Electoral Commission. And you could uh, get that sense of excitement when the announcement uh, came in for the, uh, the team of the PPP. Quite a number of the officials were present in the party. Uh, Chairman Yalute Brihamond was present. A uh, policy advisor, Kofi Asamoah was also present and they all received the good news there. The National Secretary was also uh, President Mutala Mohammed and when Dr. Ndum's name was mentioned, uh, they couldn't tell but clapping right within the conference room, being happy about the fact that their flag burned. I didn't get that feedback because I listened to the, the live broadcast on Joy FM. I didn't get I didn't hear anybody uh, make noise like the previous time when people would say, Oh, oh, you know that kind of thing. Well it it's it, it, the nature of the broadcast this time around because these phones. Uh, with the previously, we had a PA system in there, okay. and it was coordinated so that there was one person doing announcements. But this time around, the microphone was shifting between the EC chair and the gentleman who was leading the balloting exercise. Okay. So that was how it was difficult to get a reaction mm. to come on the as well. But they were in there. I think it, they, apart from the MPP, that also had more than one official being present. The next party that had quite a number of officers present was the PPP. Okay. And you could understand why they take the whole process serious, uh, because there's a party uh, that. I mean, they initiated this whole court proceedings at the high court. They won the case very early. They managed, uh, the EC was dissatisfied, took them to the Supreme Court, and subsequently the floodgate was open for all other candidates as well. So mm -hmm. it was uh, good news on their part. They were very happy that finally Dr. Endum is back on the ballot. And the NDC came, uh, ke were represented by? Uh, John Sinesia Dunkets, yeah. Him only? Yes, he was the only okay. one who came in and uh, just came, sat down. Uh, you, for them, I mean, they were al they already are where they are on the ballot, mm. unless something strange were to happen. So they were just waiting for the numbers. They were just waiting for the ballot. And talking about the numbers, we know that in previous elections, numbers uh, were interpreted or misinterpreted differently, or whether spiritually or physically. Um, as they were making the announcement, because they picked the ballot, based on what they picked, what were their reactions? Uh, for the NDC, I mean, you recall they already ran in with the uh, John 316 that was following the parliamentary balloting when they got number three on the ballot. Now, interestingly, the MPP and NDC managed to retain the same spot they had for the parliamentary How post. did that happen? Because there was, <laughs> there was a first balloting. Yes. They picked numbers, and the numbers, my understanding from listening was, that would be the 10 that you have to pick the pick real... The actual ballot. So that yeah. was what was done. So how did they both pick... You know, three, the same, and, three five, and five, which was the same as the... I mean, it was one thing that we couldn't tell but be surprised at. In fact, the MPP picked before the NDC did. So when they picked, and Peter McMillan showed a number five, and he said, we've got, he shouted, we've got the same as the parliamentary. Then we were all turning our attention to the NDC. Then surprisingly, they also ended up 
with the same number three. So for them, they've been talking about a joint 316, and that is how what transparent was this process? Was it not arranged? Oh, not at all, not at all. Yeah. Very transparent. We were present. In fact, some of the parties, even before at the very first balloting was that they were raising some concerns about the fact that they don't want it to be done. Mm. They were of the view that uh, in, in Johnson and Senator made that point that in previous years, they do it just once for presidential, it applies to the parliamentary. So he was suggesting that because they've done for parliamentary, they should simply allow it to reflect for presidential as well. Uh, but the EC chair didn't respond to that specifically. She only said, we are going ahead with the balloting. <laughs> Jacob was saying, yeah, boy, are independent presidential candidates, are his representative, Hans Opoku, again, made the same point. The CPP, James Kamna Bompe, made the same point. There was no specific response. The point, again, was that they were, we're going, going ahead, ahead with the balloting. And I love the electoral <laughs> commission. <laughs> but it's interesting, because so so she quoted the Supreme Court saying that after the ruling, they had indicated that the electoral commission could go ahead with the rest of the program. Exactly. And, and, and on the list, they had balloting next. So mm -hmm. they were at the table. But balloting was supposed to be today. Exercise. Yeah, so that was what, again, was a bit strange. And uh, <laughs> some of the comments that were passing around was the fact that uh, the possibility that someone might attempt to secure an injunction mm. to halt the process. So that was why they called the party to come in quickly. But when I interacted with uh, Mr. Kofi Japasu, he tells me that is not the case. But it's just uh, they want to still stay within time. And they felt that once they finished with those whose form they wanted to accept, they want to go ahead quickly and undertake that exercise. But talk of the numbers still, the number five, uh, the MPP, they are talking about high five. Uh, they are saying that uh, yeah, like is the five. fifth president in the fourth republic. So that is why he's number oh, five. Oh, wow. And even some you mean he's going to be the fifth <laughs> president if, if he wins? He, that's if he wins the polls. And there are some are also talking about the fact that this is his fifth election. They are counting it in the sense that 2008, <laughs> they also count the runoffs. They add the runoffs. They also add the court. <laughs> And when you put it all together, <laughs> they added the party runoff. <laughs> <laughs> they added the uh, runoff after the first round. No, you mean the 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 okay the runoff election <laughs> because so it, okay. it was three three in one in two thousand and eight, right? Exactly. Then they also add the uh, the court one, the court one added to it, and adding this one, it all makes five. <laughs> <laughs> okay, listen to this other one, which is also on the five, uh, and it's from Courage Avinu from Agbozuma. It says MPP is number five, which represents five fingers. NPP chose number five, which represents five fingers. Jesus is five letters. Allah is five letters. Power is five letters. Trump is five letters. <laughs> Ekufu is five letters. Truth is five letters. Quran is five letters. Bible is five letters. Well, well then, then you see, they're already hitting at the NPP on that. And some are saying that since they are saying high five, they're also saying it signals bye bye to Nana So that's another. <laughs> Really? Oh, okay, so five five. <laughs> that means that that's what we use in waving, waving to, exactly. some, to say to say goodbye mm -hmm. to somebody. But 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 you know, it, it was a very transparent and and cordial atmosphere. Yes, yes. Okay. I mean, the, the parties really um, it appeared they had an interest in ensuring that they get it done once and for and move on with the election. What was the reaction of the various of officials, notably Peter McMahon of the MPP, uh, the other officials of the party as well, and uh, Johnson and Sedo in Katia? And if uh, the high-ranking officials of the CPP and PPP were there, what were their reactions? For the CPP, uh, they were very happy. And this is because, uh, like we all know now, they are number one on the ballot. Uh, so uh, they think that it will be much easier to uh, sell that to electorates, tell them about the fact that when you see the ballot paper, just vote for number one. Uh, uh, for okay, have they figured out something? Are they, are they doing a straw or something? Uh, we have to wait a bit and see how <laughs> they'll be doing that. But as it stands, uh, when we, uh, James Kavanaugh Bonfi, when the announcements came in, he appeared very excited and he says that one means to emerge victorious at the close of polls. For the NPP and NDC, the obvious excitement was the fact that uh, they will be having the same arrangement mm. in terms of their parliamentary election because the fear for many of the other parties is the fact that when there is a disconnect, it might be difficult. So if you are, meaning you have to tell someone that when you are going for the presidential vote number three, for parliamentary mm. vote maybe number two. So that may be a bit too much information for uh, the average voter to keep in mind. They should just use their logos. Okay. How do they call it? Is it not logos? Yes. Yeah. Just the use the umbrella, mm. umbrella or use the elephants or use yeah. their cocoa or something. But like I personally, I, I don't think, I, I think a good number of those will be voting. No. I, I feel they know okay. who the, the various flag bearers are. I okay. feel they should be the what, person to know. I observed an election in my hometown, Angloga. And there was this old woman who wanted to know, you don't speak ever, Roland understands. And for Yevwadeha, he had his ballot paper he was looking for, the white man, <laughs> you know the white man was? That was Rollins. Rollins, Rollins, Rollins yes. wasn't standing at the time. So the gentleman just said, look for the umbrella. Okay. Look for the umbrella. 
So surprisingly, some other people really, if you we go to the it. grounds, they don't really know who is standing though. That's they are true. just voting for the emblem. And even in some cases, they don't even know the parliamentary candidates mm -hmm. as well. So they often just look out for maybe the name of the party, mm. maybe NPP or NDC. So they, they don't look out for the pictures, you say? The pictures sometimes. Okay. So then how did the parties, if they reacted at all, have been reacting in uh, perhaps aftermath of the event and, and other media platforms about how they hope to resolve that very discrepancy? Yeah, for the parliamentary and then presidential, because uh, then the numbers will be changing. Will be changing. Yeah, we are yet to get a reaction from them on that one, uh, but uh, we, we, it will still, uh, like we know for a fact, it may be a bit difficult for them. But time will tell how they'll be able to go around that uh, to ensure that they're able to inform people that this is how uh, the order should be, so that they don't lose votes because of that. And uh, again, the possibility of even sports ballots in some cases. So all those are some of the issues that the parties they ought to address. But we still need to touch base with them and find out exactly how whether they find that to be a challenge and how they intend to go around that mm. Mm. but we would like to show you uh, from 2000 we'll start from 2000 uh, unfortunately we've not been able to put together for 1992 and 1996 so we'll start we'll show you from 2000 um, what the ballot paper looked like in terms of uh, what the placement the were. numbers okay this is how we decided to arrange it uh, that's not how the electoral commission arranged it back in 2000. So, um, number one was GCPP. Number two, that was in the year 2000. Uh, we had, um, we have done that, the GCPP number one, we have NDC number two, number three being uh, the CPP. And then also we have the PNC for number four, the NRP at the time, um, led by Guzitano, number five, and then the uh, the man himself, Charles Reku Brobe. Um, mm. And so you have um, um, John Kufour of the MPP having the last position. So you'll be having them doing the... Uh, I see how. Yeah, the, the downsize mark, the thumb down, the thumb down mark. Asieho, Asieho, Asieho. All right, so that's for 2000. Let's look at 2004, if it's possible. So 2004, we had four personalities representing the four parties on the ballot paper, the PNC, uh, the MPP, and then we had the, P, the uh, what number NDC. Was, what number was the NDC? Number three. Okay. And then we had... Uh, the CPP with number four. And let's look at uh, 2008, if we can. Let's look at 2008, and we have MPP on number one, PNC number two, NDC number three. I think the NDC, they've always liked number three a lot. <laughs> DFP number four. Uh, DPP number five, CPP number six, and then we have uh, RDP number seven, and uh, an independent candidate number eight. Mm -hmm. There's a there's another twist, Roland. Somebody sends a message says NDC is number three, which represents Asamoah Jan, who is a striker, while MPP is number five, which represents John Mensa, defender. Let's see whether NDC can dribble NPP and score. <laughs> <laughs> well, how about if NDC will also strike? <laughs> and let's see whether uh, M MPP can defend. Ah, you can turn it around. When there's a penalty miss, we hope that doesn't happen. To yeah, Samoa John <laughs> yeah. oh, likes missing penalties. Man. <laughs> not, not, not really true. He, he, he missed a penalty. Some, some crucial penalties, yes, I think that's what crucial. During an important event, yes, yeah. that's why. But he always calls for us, so we should be grateful. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so ultimately now the, the, what, what, the, they've wrapped up that side of the election. It means that they have to go back and um, make sure that they do the campaigning very well and send the messages right, especially to the nooks and cranny. Um, following what the the vibes or the reactions of the parties have been to the posture of the electoral commission or the perceived posture of the the, the chairperson of the commission itself. What were the, the reactions of the various individuals who were there? It appears some of them are 
uh, are not so excited about that. And as you can understand some of the parties, particularly those who have had uh, their forms rejected at a point in time and their form being accepted now. But this time around, when their forms were accepted, uh, it appears they have a bit of a change of heart or probably they don't even want to talk about their former position anymore where they had reason to uh, question the EC chair's work in terms of uh, deciding not to accept their form. Uh, but this time around, once their form has been accepted, they want to just uh, go out there and campaign. Mm -hmm. And the PPP, the understanding we get from them is the fact that they have a view that uh, this whole uh, banter with the Electoral Commission, despite offering them some publicity in the sense that they were always in the news, uh, they were always in the news challenging the, the, the reportage was the fact that they are challenging uh, the EC in court. They got some court victories. One in the first case, the second one, they got one that also affected all others. So they said that, again, uh, give them a bit of credibility in terms of a force to be reckoned with and the fact that they were right from the onset when they got it, when they were very certain that they had, their forms had been wrongly rejected by the commission. But the other bit is also the fact that they, they feel it also slowed down their campaign a bit uh, because they would have loved to be going about campaigning. So when you go around each time on a platform, you have to explain to people as to why uh, their candidate is still not on the ballot and to give their supporters they hope that definitely once this whole thing is over we'll be back on the ballot so that was how uh, some of them took it as especially for the ppp mm. all right so uh back to the ballot paper we know the cpp is number one uh so we speak to the communications director of the party kadri abdul raup who's joining us what does number one mean to the party are they using estro hello good morning sir thanks for your time uh, good morning. Let me say a very good morning to the cherished listeners. Mm. And kindly speak up a bit for us. After all, you are number one on the pay on the ballot paper. Oh, okay. Yeah. I hope you can hear me. Yes, I can hear clear. you better yeah. now. So what does it mean to be appearing number one on the ballot paper on voting day? Yeah, I think the party was greatly overjoyed, you know, for picking the number one slot. For some time now, I think about two weeks now, we have been engaged in serious prayers. And the prayer has been that we want to be number one on the ballot box. You would have noticed, or ballot paper, you would have noticed that the Convention People's Party has always been number one in everything. So, for example, it was the Convention People's Party that decolonized Ghana from the grinding wheels of colonialism. It was the Convention People's Party that got Republican statue for Ghana. The Convention People's Party has always shown number one in everything. For example, it was the Convention People's Party, the first party to elect physically challenged person to lead, you know, as in an election. It has never happened anywhere in Africa. It has no historical precedent. So we have said that being the first party to present someone on a wheelchair to become the president of this country, the number one slot would confirm our prayer and belief that Ivor Governor Green Street is going to be the president of Ghana come 2017. And we are very prayerful about that. So what we did yesterday was a confirmation of what we have always prayed for. So we were very happy. And then the party, the rank and the file of the party have been very, very excited for this number one. And you also know that in everything that you do, you struggle to be number one. In everything that you do, whether exams, everything that you do, you struggle to be number one. So what, uh, what more could we have expected mm. if not number one? Mm. So we are extremely, extremely, you know, happy for... But Mr. For Raul, being position. number one doesn't automatically mean that people are going to vote for you, or that is no vote. So what's the, how are you going to coin that? For instance, the NPP is using the high five, the NDC is doing the John 316. What's that slogan that you're using for, for your being number one on the ballot paper? No, the, the number one for CPP, like I said, when you look at the history of the Convention People's Party, we have always almost demonstrated that we are number one in everything. So, for example, even when it comes to translating manifesto into Braille, the CPP was the first political party to do that. And then the fact that the CPP is the first political party to present, you know, a physically challenged person to lead us in, 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 in this year's election, should tell you that the, because when you look at the chart that you displayed you know, in the previous years, you would notice from that chart that CPP has never run one on the ballot paper. But for the first time, we are presenting someone who is sitting on a wheelchair, mm. and that person is running one. So if it you have chosen, for instance, number two or three, uh, if you have chosen number two or three, what would you have said then? 
Oh, if we had just, in fact, the party never prayed for number two and number three. Our prayer was number one. And God answered our prayer. So we told God that we want to be number one on the ballot slot. Mm. And God gave us number one. And we have also asked God that we want Ivor Kobna Green State to be the president of Ghana. So it's a confirmation of bigger things to come. So the party is greatly excited. We are very, very happy. And we know that this number one slot that we have gotten on the ballot paper is certainly going to lead us to the new Jerusalem that we are praying to. Mm. And then God has answered our prayer. And we are very positive and sure that Ivor Kobna Green State, the same way that we managed to be number one, that is how we are going to take the whole country by storm. And if you know the political history of Ivor Kobna Green State, he has always met first. He has never lost any contest that he entered into. So we are very sure that all the factors are aligning. And Ivor Kobna Green State, Ghanaians, would wake up to a great shock in 2016. Let me yeah. take this opportunity to quickly ask what your uh, presidential candidate has been up to. What's the plan in terms of the campaign? At the moment, he's in the eastern region. For the past four days, he's actually been tarrying in different communities and constituencies in the eastern region. And as you may know about Ivor Kobna Green State, he's not too much a media person. He's a groundsman. He's a salesman. He's always in the field. And as I speak, he is making impacts from one community to community, constituency to constituency. And we are very sure that our campaign, as we have always said, is going to be a very humble campaign. It's a campaign that we are not going to make too much noise. You, do rallies and you know transport people you know to the rally grounds and when it comes to voting purposes you will not get anything the CPP this time around you notice that our approach is completely different we are meeting Ghanaians wherever they are we go to the fields we go to the farms we go to the villages we get to engage with Ghanaians one on one and Ghanaians love Ivor Kobna district because the feedback that we have been getting is that he is very intelligent he is very visionary and on top of that is handsome and that is what charms many of the women and the youth of the country oh so really so what's that percentage because there are obviously more women is, are you putting a certain percentage on the fact that as you describe he's handsome and therefore he will attract a lot of women to vote for him are you putting a percentage on it oh you know a a, a, a wise man just a, a once you know defined charisma as a rotten disease that has no cure you understand and i vote Green against it he's highly charismatic People like to see his face. And that is why we prayed that he should be number one on the ballot paper. Because that charismatic face, that handsome face, is going to attract those undoubtedly. So okay. you will wait and see what is going to happen. All right, we we'll wait and see. It's going to show Ghanaians the vote. All right. Uh, thanks for talking to us, Mr. Kadri uh, Abdul Rauf, his communications director of the Convention People's Party, the CPP, speaking to us about. Uh, what number one on the ballot paper means. Uh, we've got the NDC's George Lossing on the line to speak to us on this as well. Uh, we, we know for a fact that, first of all, the party is happy that both the presidential and parliamentary are sharing the same number. Uh, they're using the John 316. Mr. Lossing, good morning. Good morning. Are you officially using John 316? Uh, the fact is, for me personally, numbers do not matter. It is hard work. You can be number one and you don't do anything. And in this case, in some cases or in some constituencies, a parliamentary candidate will be number one. It is only the presidential that is better. It's the a, a parliamentary is dynamic. Where the first two do not have a, do not have a candidate in that particular constituency will come number one. It's one three. So but the fact is depending on how hard you work and how uh, uh, penetrating your message. So that is it. So we are working hard. We are not looking at numbers. So you're not people using... Say, mm -hmm. People say three is win. People say don't say that, that is not it. It is our hard work. It is also about educating members or supporters or sympathizers where they can identify what, what they are in terms of identification and how to vote. That is what is the job ahead now. Mm. Uh, is it a concern to the party that the NDP, Nanak Nedwaj Marolins, is just before the NDC? We are concerned. It's the ballot. But still a concern. So if you are, you are writing an exam and somebody sits in, in front of you, is it, is it, should, it, should that be a concern or a brother? Definitely somebody who will, will be uh, first, somebody will be second, somebody will be third, somebody will be fourth, fifth, depending on the number of people running. So why should that be a concern? The concern for us now is to work hard to retain power.
Mm. Make sure His Excellency John Gavani Mahama is retained, and we augment our numbers and powers. That is our concern now. So not about who is ahead of us or who is not. No, that is not our concern. Mm. And I and I ask you that because it's NDP and NDC. Because you can NDC and whatever, whatever, whatever. We are not uh, uh, concerned about any. We are concerned about NDC. Mm. So what's the message in terms of uh, the communication with the people down there to be able to identify the yes, number three? The message will go down to them. Uh, we'll now we have, we'll get, for them to identify the identification using the, uh, the uh, umbrella to identify it. Yes. And then again, when they are thumbprint, to how to thumbprint to us that they do not uh, uh, fear or into the other, uh, other, other lane or other box. Mm -hmm. So that we don't have spoiled ballot papers. So that come December 7th, His Excellency John Dramani Mahama will emerge victorious. Okay. J just apart before. From the position, mm -hmm. Apart from the picture or his poetry, uh, the, the uh, umbrella is identity. So another identification. And then again, how to thumbprint and thumbprint properly. So just before you go, Mr. Lossing, tell us what the party is doing in terms of the campaign. Where are you? Uh, you're, di you're using different strategies, different persons going on the campaign trail. What, what's, what's happening today? That is what campaign is about. I have just come from the Bronga House region. Yes, I met from the Bronga House region. Everybody said that is what campaign is about. Campaign is not about everybody uh, uh, at one point at the same time. No. Every campaign that thinks uh, the creation of man, you have to uh, divide yourself. You have to scatter. You must be everywhere. Everyone must be somewhere to propagate the message, and we're doing the propagating the NDC message, mm -hmm. propagating the good works of His Excellency John Zamanima, uh, showcasing our parliamentary candidates as well, so that mm -hmm. come December 7th, um, good people of this country will vote massively for John Dramani Mahana, massively for our parliamentary candidates so, throughout the 275 constituencies. So where's, where's the, the president today? Uh, any plans in terms of and campaigning? I've just arrived in Accra. I don't think yet. I've just arrived in Accra for the Brown Half region. Mm, all right. And I guess as I arrive, I had to go to another constituency to see that then I'm just back home. All right. So I, I don't actually know where the president is so now. Mr. Lawson, we're grateful that uh, you, you, you've you spoken to us on the subject. Thanks a lot for your time. That's a, a Deputy General Secretary of the NDC, George Lawson. Let's speak to the PPP now. We've got uh, Paco Akon, who is Communications Director of the party. Good morning to you, Mr. Akon. Finally, I feel like playing final to you. Congratulations, <laughs> you made it. Yes, we made it. We made it. Uh, very uh, good morning to your uh, viewers and listeners, and thank you for having me. Mm. Uh, I think that uh, what has happened uh, to us um, is uh, a demonstration of how mature our democracy uh, has become. And we are very grateful for the support we received from the good people of this country. You recall that when the EC decided to disqualify Dr. Papa Christine Dung, a lot of Ghanaians were, were worried that such a man is not going to participate in, in this election, especially knowing that the 2016 election is going to be fought on who is better positioned to deliver jobs, 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 millions of jobs to the seeming unemployed youth. And so we can't go into 2016 election without Dr. Indo. We all know his credentials. We all know his track record. We all know what he has done in his private life as, 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 as a successful businessman. Today in America, they have elected a successful businessman. And we are quite optimistic that same will be repeated here. We, even in U.S., where a lot of people, Ghanaians, have the dream of, of going to live there, they are even thinking and have actually elected someone to bring back the economy home. And so we cannot sit here with all the problems, with all the unemployment, and not elect a successful businessman to take over from President Mahama. We are tired of having lawyers. We are tired of having uh, communicators or speakers. We need practical people, people who have track record, people whose job creation agenda is visible. And if I say visible, I mean in all the 216 
districts of this country, mm. everywhere you go, Dr. Indom has a mark there. Sure. Not so long so, ago, he commissioned a rice milling factory at Brara, and that has delivered millions of jobs to the people there. Mm. Very well said, after, Mr. Akon. He went to Asin Brace to deliver same. Mm. So, Mr. Akon, what does it mean to be number four on the ballot paper for the party? Well, I'm sure uh, anybody who has read the Bible knows that on the fourth day, God created the sun, the moon, and all the stars. And we all know the purpose of these, uh, uh, of these things. I mean, our survival depends on the sun, the moon, and the stars. We can't live without these uh, planets. And so if God created that on the fourth day, we are hopeful that we are the solution to our problems. We are going to provide uh, 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 what Ghanaians need. We are going to fulfill the needs of Ghanaians. We are going to rely on this. And don't forget, <laughs> coincidentally, our symbol is also the sun. The sun that is going to shine on corruption, that is going to provide uh, 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 life to, 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 to people who are hopeless, people who, 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 who cannot even <laughs> foresee what is at stake for them in, in, in the future. And so we believe that our position is a manifestation of the will of God. We have gone through a lot of electoral tribulation, but by the grace of God, we are back on the ballot. Mm -hmm. And we believe that reading meaning, reading meaning from our position, we are very, very optimistic that we are the ones who are going to deliver this country from the darkness we find ourselves mm -hmm. in. You but, know the purpose mm -hmm. of light, and sun this light, Moon is like so we are going to deliver Ghanaian so from the darkness, uh, uh, poor and bad leadership has has plunged us into. Finally, on this, just before you go, how are you going to tell your supporters to identify Dr. Papa Kwesi number four on the ballot? Well, um, it is very simple. I'm sure uh, as we speak, a lot of people know the the symbol of the PPP, which is the span. The, the red bright fan and so we will tell them that when i don't know how the ec is going to uh, 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 print out the ballot paper whether it's going to be horizontal or vertical but whichever way they they they, they, they print it uh, the ballot papers out we will tell them to count one to ignore the first one ignore the second one ignore the third one and just some print on the fourth one they should not go beyond number four. They should just count one, two, three, and then four. Pine. That's all. Mm. All right. We wish you well. Uh, all the best uh, in the things that you plan ahead. Uh, so now we know what the PPP thinks, the CPP, the NDC. Uh, there's also this one, uh, the PNC. And this is a conversation that the graphic reporter had uh, with the oh, general... Sorry the General Secretary mm. Atik Mohammed, uh, who said that the sit position, which was the day of independence, meant that the PNC was ready to win the election to bring about economic independence. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The numbers, what do they mean <laughs> to you? <laughs> the interpretations <laughs> and all. Uh, it, it, it doesn't mean much. Uh, it doesn't mean much to me. Uh, for me, I maintain that people should be able to identify uh, who they are voting for, whether the person is 9, for 10, for 11, whatever the position is. That person should be able to identify the candidate and i also believe that if you're a candidate and you've done so well for yourself whether you are in power or you're out of power uh, you, you should be able to sell your message and your image such that people can even maybe in the strangest of instances close their eyes and thumbprint mm. for you so the numbers for me uh, it doesn't mean much the u.s elections have taught us that elections are very fierce and competitive and it doesn't matter what insult and bickering and things there are um, that it depends on how you get to the people when you talk to them. So you believe that the candidate, and especially you being a reporter and observing and analyzing, have talked to the people and the people are with them? Uh, for the, most of the candidates, one thing that I've realized is that most of them, they do more of the uh, public address. And, and that is why uh, this time around, again, from the U.S. election, one thing that we've also learned is about the polls. What the polls say may be a bit deceiving. You can't rely on that because the candidate mounts a platform and he speaks. And someone was uh, saying yesterday that it appears 
who the person people are voting for uh, in terms of the numbers they don't want to people to know they just mm. keep it to themselves they simply walk to the ballot and they make a choice yeah. so it's very difficult again someone was also making a point that a good number of the people who really determine who they'll be voting for or who, who determines who will be winning the election are people who are often more often are not not in a good position there are people who have problems with jobs they don't have homes so sometimes it says in terms of the polls it's difficult to reach out to such people mm. so when you go out you often find people who are comfortable they are interested in their politics they can confidently say they are voting for ndc or mpp but those who determine the vote the floating voters they are people who he, he believes are often not in that category so it's difficult to reach out to them so sometimes they may be going about sending their message but those will be determining who wins. <laughs> it's very difficult to have access to them. That's good analysis. Uh, here's uh, a message to us because we're Joy News. Joy News, you should have provided EC with small balls to be used in the balloting and not paper tearing. That's from Godfrey in that table. Book. Like they do in the, the football. <laughs> that football. Yeah. <laughs> but Joseph, thank you so much as always. Joseph, thank uh, you very much. You know, yeah. for the, hopefully nobody goes to court so that you follow. But if somebody <laughs> does, we didn't we'll to, ask we'll the person to too. So, you know. There will be more on this, but we'll still stay with the subject. Uh, we want to find out what some of you out there think about the placement of the presidential candidates on the ballot sheets. And our colleague, Benis Abubedu, she's been out and about this morning. It's a day after presidential balloting took place at the EC's head headquarters here in Accra. But if you don't know as of now what the placements are, let me just remind you. So the CPP led by Ivor Kabna Green Street is on number one, followed by the NDP's Nana Kunedua Jaman Rawlings and number two. And number three, we have the NDC led by John Dramani Mahama. Number four is the PPP's Dr. Papakusi Indum. Number five is the MPP's Nana Adodan Kwekufuado. Number six is the PNC's Edward Mahama. And at number seven is the independent candidate Jacob Osei Yabwa. Turn on to social media now and there's a lot of fuss about the placements. While some say high five, others are saying John 316. Others have even said that the first John is John, uh, Jerry John Rawlings. The second John is John Evans Thamels. And the third John is John Dramani Mahama. But they maintain the third John has only one chapter. And that could mean uh, that John Dramani Mahama could only serve for one term. I'm here at the Circle Taxi Rank to speak with two uh, gentlemen here. I have Emmanuel Odonko and Michael Ayer. To really find out from them, does it really matter where someone is placed on the ballot sheet? Uh, good morning to your listeners and good morning to your viewers. Uh, I don't think uh, this is relevant. To my personal view, if somebody is going to vote, it doesn't matter where the person is placed on the ballot paper. It is where God, what God has says is what will, be, I mean, will happen. Balloting doesn't mean where you belong, John 316 or whatever, whatever, whatever you belong. The moment I get my polar paper, I know who I'm going to vote for. It doesn't matter all this kind of hula balloo making noise about it. I mean, we have grown in, in politics, we are moving ahead. This is a toddler's way of behaving. I, mean, I don't think this is necessary. It's oh. irrelevant, to my view. All right. It's Ma very, very Michael, relevant. Michael, hold on a bit. Let me, uh, sorry, Emmanuel, let me speak to Michael now. Does it really matter, I mean, where anybody's place, if I'm number one, number two, does it matter? I thank you to Van Vins. This is nothing wrong with it. We have, have already decided whom are we to go to vote. What, whatever position you are placed, the person who is going to vote has made his mind already. So this is, there's nothing wrong with the position of the all right okay now let's talk about something interesting that's also coming up especially with the positioning now some are saying uh, that probably the ndp's position could hurt the ndc because uh, the ndp's nana kunedwa jaman rollins is placed above at number two uh, above the ndc's john dramani mahama who's at number three do you see this affecting uh, the ndc's chances in any way um it's 50 50 because of the colors the ndp is holding and then the colors of the ndc some might just not look at the picture and then they will look at the article, but still it's not relevant. It doesn't matter where well, all they have to do is just to campaign about where they belong on the ballot paper. But where you belong, that down 360 is a, a holistic thing or whatever, whatever. I mean, it, it, to me, I still stand on my point. It's not relevant. Where Nanado is at number five, people will see the color, the picture of Nanado, they will go and vote. It doesn't mean if the person takes the paper, you just see the up ones and it doesn't look where the down ones are. 
it's not it's not relevant. So they should just think about the way they talk. Because we have children that they follow us with the uh, the way we speak. Put some sense into the uh, the, 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 the the voters. It doesn't stop talking about this uh, where the people belong on the balance sheet. It doesn't necessarily mean anything. Mm. So, so Emmanuel, you think that Ghanaian politics has grown above that? Uh, way, 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 way above that. We should be thinking about going to the space and stop thinking about this Calipo issue, stop thinking about John 316. I mean, we should be thinking about things to do. I mean, that to take us forward. Mm. And this kind of thoughtless way of behaving, I mean, it's just pissing some of us off. All right. So, uh, uh, Michael, you said that people have already made up their minds. They know who they are going to vote for. But do you think that uh, the position of the NDP and the NDC could affect, uh, well, the fate of any of these parties? I'm sure it will never affect any of them. No one will change his mind. And we are going to look at the pictures of the people and the position of them to vote. So whatever position the post, whatever position the person has been placed, doesn't matter of the vote. Well, very interesting views here I'm picking up at the Circle Taxi Rank here in Accra. Uh, Michael and Emmanuel have been telling me it doesn't really matter where anybody's placed on the ballot sheets. But now let's go to an issue uh, that has come up um, in different conversations on, on social media, in the newspapers and on radio as well. Some people have hinted that probably the Electoral Commission should consider a horizontal ballot sheet instead of the vertical one we are used to. Michael, do you agree? Um, I'm Emmanuel. Um, sorry, Emmanuel. I'm sorry. I think I think uh, the vertical way of placing it to is a problem. It should be horizontal, so that uh, when you open the paper, it's horizontal. But the vertical way of sometimes, wait, is, if it is on the horizontal, it's easily seen than the vertical way of placing. So I believe it should be changed to the uh, uh, vertical way. And, and and what 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 would it change really if it's a vertical? Or horizontal you know who you're going to vote for yeah so but when you open it sometimes people are in the haste of voting when you open it that is in the horizontal it's even better than the vertical all right okay so uh, your view on that before we wrap up this conversation what do you also think about that I support them, my mm. first uh, saying okay it should be on the horizontal in order to observe it easily the horizontal all right. Thank you very much. Uh, I've been speaking to Michael Ayer and Emmanuel Ojonko here at the uh, taxi rank at Circle. And they've been saying that it doesn't really matter which party is at number one or number two or number three on the ballot sheet. What they think is that a lot of people have made up their minds already, and that is what matters. And uh, for Emmanuel, he's saying that he believes that Ghanaian politics has grown above uh, who is placed at what point on the ballot sheet and that. We should be looking at doing more things in Ghanaian politics than just uh, uh, creating some interesting uh, ideas and ideologies around the positions of uh, the parties and their presidential candidates. And he cites, for example, John 3.16, and he says he doesn't believe it's, it's, it has nothing to do with what the Bible says and where President George Ramani Mahama is placed. That will be all for your Roving Report today. I'm Venice Abubedu.